Hello, and welcome to Kolak, America's heart. Life is generally easy in Kolak. The spirit of our small town is built around enjoying life, despite our technological empire. Kolak is like Paris. Art, music, and treasures of life are not just incidental. They are central to the spirit of our little town. This is a special gift for visitors and those who live in our vast green valley. Kolak's natural beauty can be thanked to the peaks that tower over us in our four corners, shielding us from the elements. Spend the day at Crater Lake, fed by the ever-flowing Riley River. America's heart. Enjoy our historic Main Street, or take a tour of our world-famous Shepherd's Winery, my favorite. Golok prides itself in being a world leader in renewable energy and advanced medicine, all thanks to our most famous attraction, Synchroneity Tech. Many new families find their home in Kolak, brought in to fill one of the country's most exciting genetic research facilities, many open roles. <laughs> Science is at the very soul of Kolak, unlike anywhere else in the world. Gated by nature itself. We begin again with a short journal entry from each of our passengers, enlightening us on their current mental state and recollection of what has happened to them so far. Perception. It is always and will always be about perception. Please. Dear Rachel, what have you gotten me into? I think the only way you really thought Marcus and I would somehow get together was this is was if you disappeared I will say he's just as equally obnoxious without you as he is with you but I am trying my best because you said it meant a lot to you where are you I miss you I'm worried about you but I still feel like you're somewhere within reach I'm uh, a bit bloodied right now because I found myself in a giant hole <laughs> don't know where I am. I don't know where anyone else is. But I have your diary. That, uh, felt really rude reading, but... Rachel, what was going on in your head, and why did you think you had to do all of this alone? Also, side note, you were thinking about moving to LA with Marcus? I thought we had a plan. I thought we were gonna go to school together. I guess none of that matters if you're not here. I miss you. Billy's thoughts. Title pending. I think I'm starting to understand what's going on in Kolok, but every answer I get just leads to more questions. Tibby's doing more research for me. He knows everything we've gone through and he believes me. I guess that makes him my closest friend. Nobody else in our group has anyone they can trust like Tibby, and that makes me feel fortunate to have him. Kolok is a dumb place, and I can't wait to leave, but I hope I stay friends with Tibby. The social studies teacher, of all people, helped us look for Rachel. He was pictured in her journal, so she wanted us to find him. Even though Mr. Thomas didn't remember Rachel, he wanted to help us get to the bottom of things can't help but wonder if we put Mr. Thomas in a lot of danger by using him. Everything we do seems to be the wrong thing. We may have gotten some bartender killed by Mickey's dad. Also, I broke into Rachel's dad's law office and got caught. They got us all on tape, which is not good. Krabby Pants Mr. Jewel had a file about Rachel dying 11 years ago, so I stole it. He didn't seem to like that because he came chasing after us with the baseball bat. I hope we're doing the right thing. Nothing feels right. Gosh, I hope we can make everything normal again. With the sound of shattering glass fading away behind us, it felt like our adrenaline would take us all the way across town. What have I done? Why couldn't I for once just shut my mouth? 
They always did say I'd be a screw-up. Just like you. I really thought we could have had something. I always hoped one day we could be a family again. So I kept trying to hold it together, but it may as well have been held with duct tape. I should have known it would eventually come apart. What are we to them but a bunch of lowlifes anyway? They knew you'd be disposable. That's all this town ever thought of us. Disposable. Dear Tandy Computer, what the hell? I always thought that I had this special connection with Rachel. And not only is she missing, but apparently she died years ago, according to this newspaper. But what does that even mean? Does that mean that there's some kind of alternate world or alternate life? And if that's the case, what's real anymore? Am I real? Are these people I'm hanging out with real? I don't know, but they're getting me in a lot of trouble, and I'm really concerned. One's got a dad that's sh shooting at people. A teacher, I don't know what his secret motives could be. A whole company who may have some things going on uh, underneath. Billy's just weird. And I know this is going to sound crazy, but as much as I know that Sky and I don't get along, I'm really concerned. I mean, she fell in a hole. Where is she? Where's Rachel? What is going on? I just don't know about this place anymore. Dear bag of nuts. I'm in the gang, baby. The date is Tuesday, March 5th, 1991. The place is Coloc, Washington. 4.30 p.m. We won't bother checking in on our fair complexion ladies as they have made it clear they are uninterested in us for the time being. Though, that who has been forgotten was of great interest to them. Us, apparently not. The immediate peril that faces our passengers demands our focus retain on the moment at hand. An enraged father who is lost, haunted, by the memories of what once was, baseball bat in hand chases young Billy Baker and Mickey Jones through the back alleys of Main Street, intent on God only knows what. Will each of our two endangered passengers roll their flight difficulty of six? This one? Three. Four. Plus one. That is a failure from both of you. Uh, Mickey, you do have one token available that would get you right at six. I'll use my one token. Great. As you run down the street, Mickey, you've got a lot longer legs than Coma Boy as you start putting some distance between yourself and Mr. Jewel, who chases after you with the bat. You hear the sound of gravel sliding from behind you as you turn to see young Billy Baker slipping on the ground as the folder he was carrying flies out in front of him. Papers fly into the air in all directions. Get the papers! We need the papers! I go back to grab the papers and keep running. Can you roll your flight for me one more time? Difficulty of seven. Billy Baker, you are now on the ground. You feel a sting coming from your right knee as ah. a small amount of blood starts to pierce through your jeans. You hear coming from behind you, When I catch you, you little son of a bitch! What? What are you going to do? Are you going to kill me? You see from out of the corner of your eye the bat raising up as he's closing in ever closer to you. Uh, I rolled a three plus one. As you turn and run backwards, you slip. Actually, you have five tokens available if you would like to use any of them. Uh, the difficulty was seven? Yes. I'll use three. Use three tokens. Tell me how you pick up these papers. I just run, grab them all together. I don't know what order they're in. Okay, do you grab the folder as well? Uh, sure. <laughs> do you help young Billy Baker? Do I have time to do that? You can try. I'll try. Great, so tell me how you would like to try to help young Billy Baker, and I will come up with a difficulty for you. I want to try while I'm reaching, grabbing the papers and just shoving them under my arm, to just grab him by the hand to get him back on his feet as quickly as I can. Roll with a difficulty of five on your grit. Grit. Ooh, okay. Bill, you see this bat closing in on you as you pause, stunned in the moment. Eight. You grab Billy by the hand. Billy, you feel this hand reach out, pulling you up, sliding you across the ground as you get your feet Whoa. back under your legs and start moving forward. You begin to make a little bit of distance. 
But I'm gonna need you both to succeed on that flight roll one more time. Difficulty of five now. Four. Four plus one, so five. You have a four, Billy. You do have one token. I'll use it. Both of you start to get some distance. Tell me how you get away in this situation. Uh, I want to pick up my pace, regardless of how bad my leg hurts, and say, you need to get some closure, old man. You hear no response. As you turn and look, Mr. Jewel has stopped. His hands on his knees. The bat drops to the ground. He turns, looks at you, points. His head turns as he grabs the bat, slides it on the ground and begins to walk away back towards the law office. You continue to run, creating as much distance from the man as you possibly can. Who knows, he could be going back for his car or law enforcement. You were caught on tape breaking in and stealing from his establishment. What would you like to do? Listen, we should probably lay low. They have, they have us on, on tape. What happened in there while you were in there? I hope the distraction I made was worth it because I might have gotten myself in a little bit more trouble. Um, well, they caught me and then he took me to the surveillance room where he basically saw all of this happen and I'm so stupid I didn't think to grab the tape and I walked to the office, I got his keys and I found this secret file with like papers in it and they seem to be really important if you want to look at them. But the are you still are standing in this alley? Have you hidden? Have you moved yourself out of the line of sight? Yeah, yeah, we should be out of sight. Great. So you're going to turn a corner. Uh, I need you both to roll your flank for me one more time. This is quite easy. Difficulty of three. You'll basically succeed unless you do that. <laughs> That's a two, though. Nine. That's still a failure. You have three more tokens available. I'll use one. You use one to keep yourself hidden as you both duck down next to a green large dumpster hidden out of view in this alleyway as you get a moment to collect yourselves and hand off this folder. Is this Rachel and her brother? I think so. Marcus has everything else, but there's a there's like a letter from the city council and there's like a, a newspaper clipping that said that Rachel died in like 1980. Those are currently not in play. I would hold on to those. I only have these. What is all this blank paper for? I don't know, but I think it's like in Back to the Future 3 where Doc's name starts disappearing. So because he doesn't exist. She's disappeared from... These would have been pictures of her. Maybe, but I don't know. What's the zipper? Yeah, that part's pretty scary to me, actually, because... Billy Baker will now roll his grit. Difficulty of five as the memory of those faces from the night before Two. fills his mind. Billy Baker has six tokens available. Uh, I'll use three. Though the thought frightens you, you don't let it give you too much pause, but you are plagued by these visions of the faces, their eyes zipped shut, their mouths zipped shut their voices emitting from only God knows where. When, when Rachel disappeared, there were people that had zippers on their faces. Gross. It was super gross. So this is all getting bigger than I expected. Yep, and I think I might have just gotten myself and my dad in even more trouble. I think we might be in over our heads with this. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna need to stay away from the police for sure. Yeah, I think that I need to go home. I don't know if I'm even gonna be able to go there anymore after today. I think I need to get some stuff. I kinda wanna do some digging. I, I put Tibby on, on doing research. My, my dorky friend. You think that'll do any good? Tibby? Maybe. I mean, he's not very smart, but he watches a lot of movies, and he's got, like, street smarts, you know? Okay. I mean, not, like, real street smarts, but, like, like he is aware of street smarts. You know what? Any kind of weird answer to this might just be what we're looking for. 
I think I'm going to go to the comic shop. He'd All probably right. be there. Do you want to go? I have to get some stuff from my house while I know it's hopefully safe, but we should meet up after. Okay. I'm going to head to the comic shop. So you would not like to establish a place to meet up after. I will remember that. So, you begin heading to the comic book shop, you to your apartment. There is no sign of Mr. Thomas or Sammy. I'm sure they're okay. Most definitely. No harm will come of them. Scout's honor. For the moment, it appears that the immediate danger has passed. Well, for the majority of the group, anyway. But where, oh where, is our dear fearless leader? Leader, if merely by years on this earth, Marcus Bennett. Having split from the group upon the first sign of danger, he made it a, made it away quite scot-free. But to where, Marcus? Um, I'm gonna run to the Taco Bell Express. Okay. You've made it at this point. You are quite winded. It is the other side of town from where you currently were. It's a long run. As you bust your way through the in entrance, everyone in the establishment stops and stares, surprised to see Marcus Bennett so out of breath and what appears to be quite frightened. <sighs> Whew. Whoa, that was a workout. You know, just getting ready for the, what the big fuck, game. Man? What the fuck, man? What? 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 What's up? Wait, Mallory. Come here. Come here. I'm covering you. Come here. Take a I'm break. I'm doing your job. I know. Take a, take a break real quick. Come here. I need to talk to you There's... outside. Oh. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll just leave the counter of the place that we work completely open as I was the only person here doing work because you, you you weren't do alright fine let me lock the register Jesus I appreciate it next, next rental's on me alright yeah man now look so I want to I want to take a, I want to go outside Mallory okay Mallory locks the register as he makes eyes to the individual running the gas uh, register on the other side of the establishment, keep an eye on things, and you make your way outside. Now I gotta ask you a question. Okay. This is a question that I've been asking a lot of people today, and it's very answers, so. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, okay, go ahead. Do you know a Rachel Jewell? Um, girlfriend of mine. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, sorry, Marcus. Um, I would know if you had a girlfriend. Oh my god. Okay. I, I, w I would know unless you've been lying to me, which would be really fucking not cool. But, uh, I have not seen you with Take a, look a at woman. This. And this is... It's a newspaper, 1980. Talks about a girl, Rachel Jewell, who died in a car accident. Dude, 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 dude. Listen, I knew... Are you... The, like, it says that she's like five. This is... But I don't... I this knew is her, gross. I don't want to... I wanna... knew her as our age, dude. Like, literally, just a day ago. And now, not only has she disappeared, and no one knows who she is, she's but now this dead. newspaper saying she's dead years ago. So, Mr. Jewell, the... Prosecutor, Mr. Jewell? Like, yes. He had a family. Yeah, they died in a car accident like 11 years ago, man. So you know about that. But people been acting You know, I'm holding it in my hand. But you I just mean, people have been acting like that, that doesn't even happen. They were like trying to hide it. They were trying to bury it. But I'm telling you, in my experience, as recent as a day ago, this was a person that was alive, that grew up just like we did, that I was actually seeing in our school, at our age, dating, and then... I, I'm, I'm sorry, man. It's going to take me a little bit to process this. So you were dating somebody. I didn't know about it. She's not a five-year-old. She died when she was five, but she didn't. And was our age, but I didn't know about it. I, I'm, I'm really confused. And I'm sorry. I'm a little upset because I've been covering for you since school. And where did you go today? Like, every, People said you left with Mr. Thomas. 
yeah we went to go find out what was going on wait so mr thomas remembers well he kind of doesn't he says he doesn't but i don't know if i fully trust him if he does or doesn't but rachel had a picture of him as well as you like know that, that uh freaky kid mickey jones Rachel had a picture of her dad's car and there's all these gold shoes and a squirrel is talking to me. It is all kinds of crazy. Jones, right Jones. Oh, everybody's been coming and talking about that this afternoon. What's up? Like he was at the bar when the bartender shot himself. I'm just, the bartender did what? Shot himself? Yeah, everybody's been talking about like uh, apparently Jones was in the bar just having a drink and b- bartender blew his brains out. Wow. Okay. Look. Yeah, apparently Jones called it in. That saw the whole thing. It's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I I probably got some some uh, secondhand smoke from you when this ha- had these crazy visions. You know, this is all crazy. I'm just gonna... Yeah, I didn't know Mr. Jewel had an ex-wife. That's crazy. Yeah. It's no wonder he's so uptight all the time. You know, who knows? This might even be one of those, like, gag... Is it an ex-wife if they died? Is that inappropriate? What do you call... I mean, because he's married now, but that one's not dead. What do you call... Is that an ex-wife? So that's the thing you want to get hung up on. Okay. That's, that's the thing that's bothering me the most right now. You know what? I mean, you're just being weird, dude. I don't... Never mind. I thought I, I thought I could talk to you. I just... You can talk to me. I, 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 we, we talk about everything. It's f- fine. I just don't... So do you believe me, then? <laughs> I mean, believe... I, I, what, what is there to believe that... You're the only sane person in town. Oh, sorry. You and Jones's daughter. And Billy Baker. And Sky Coma H- Boy? Yeah. And Sky Hawkins. But she's missing. She fell in the hole. <laughs> Dude. I, I thought, okay. If I thought we were going to do shrooms together. I thought, Dude. Come on, this is not about shrooms. You know we've talked several times right here about how there's some crazy, freaky, weird stuff that happens in this town. We've never been able to explain it. I think this might be. I mean, a part yeah, of like, it. you know, normal weird stuff. But this is beyond level, and it somehow it's... might connect all back to that secret deity place that my parents work at. Both of my parents work at that place. They never talk about it, and now all this weird stuff is happening, and it could be connected. Well, I need you to trust me on this, man. You're I... my best friend. And because I'm your best friend, I'm, I, I'm here for you. Are you? I'm here for you. Yeah? But you can't ask me to believe if I can't, if I'm not supposed to believe. I don't, re- if you're the only person that remembers this and coma boy and whoever, I, how am I even supposed to believe? This is this is a lot, man. Really? Marcus Bennett of... will now roll his charm as he oh, does gosh. his best to convince his best friend that what he says is true. Difficulty of 10. Two. Marcus Bennett does not contain enough tokens to make this succeed. It's fine. You know what? Don't even worry about it. I thought I could trust you. No, you can trust me, man. You can tell me anything. We have talked so much about conspiracy theories here and came up with some crazy ideas. I'm coming to you with this one, and now you're going to tell me you can't believe me? But they're conspiracy... Uh, Dude, if I came up to you, like, right now, and I was like, hey... I can't even think of a lie good enough. This is the craziest lie I've ever heard. Which makes me want to believe it. Because really involved, man. Yeah. It's deep. And why are you carrying around a ripped out piece of newspaper? And what's that other thing you're carrying? You know what? Don't even worry about it. 
I know now that I can just have to not tell my conspiracies to you unless they're I, conspiracies we watch on television or in movies. I thought I thought I thought I could come to you, but you know what? Well, B Don't movies I, are B movies, man. No, no, it's fine. You know what? That's it's cool. You stay here, finish the shift. I'm gonna go home. Oh yeah, finish the shift. Yeah, yeah, do that. Oh okay. Yeah, I got I got it. I'll finish the shift. And I was never here. Okay. Who's gonna ask if you were? Don't worry about it. And then I keep running. <laughs> Marcus Bennett turns and runs out of the Taco Bell parking lot, running his way across town. Where where are you headed to? I'm Marcus I'm heading Bennett. home. Marcus Bennett turns in the general direction of his house as Mallory watches you run into the distance. Now, I did mention that the majority of the group was not in any immediate danger, but the minority is in ever as much danger as they could be. We begin again, seven hours prior, March 5th, 10 a.m., Mammon. Sky Hawkins sits alone in what appears to be a waiting room for hours now. The room is damp with a musty smell rising from the dark brown carpet. The walls are layered in laminate paneling. A hard couch sits facing a wall, flanked by end tables. Rest small glass empty ashtrays and copies of Time magazine. A generic Muzak plays, but from an unknown source in the room. This room, Sky Hawkins, not unlike a cell, features no doors, no exits, no windows, just a large oil painting of an old, wrinkled man. He wears a blue coat, a black bowler hat, and stands with a black cane with the head of a snake. In his right hand appears to be a gold coin. The painting features a very Venetian deep red undercoat that pulls the man's tired eyes forward from his pale yellow, purple, and green face. As Sky Hawkins stares at this painting, the red of his eyes appear to breathe, pulse. For a moment, Sky Hawkins believes that they could be watching her. But a quick move around the space makes it very clear the eyes are fixated on whoever sits on that couch, the center of the room. A plaque next to the painting reads, In Loving Memory, Shiloh Anah, 1848 to 1962. Aspire to be more. The first hour in the cell led to much anger and panicked attempts to escape. The second Sky found herself in a corner reading Rachel's diary, learning as much as she could of the friend she cared so deeply for, but so clearly barely knew. Sky Hawkins, why don't you inform us of your current state? I'm so tired. I'm tired. My knuckles are bloody. I've ripped everything apart in here. Broken everything I can. You hear that? You probably don't have insurance on this place. Not gonna get another ugly couch like that again. My blood's all over it. I kicked it good. I just wanna be out of here. I just wanna be out of here. Can anyone hear me? Sky Hawkins will now roll her brains. Difficulty of six. As she calls out for anyone, like she's done many times before. Waiting to see if there's anyone on the other end. I got a one. A loud boom is heard from above as the ceiling starts to move down towards you, getting closer and closer, the walls themselves trapping you in. <gasps> the space begins to get smaller as you crouch down and the ceiling continues to shrink. Okay, more I'm sorry, I'm sorry for more. what I did. Please stop, please stop. I, 
won't hurt anything again. I won't touch anything. Sky Hawkins will now roll her charm. Difficulty of five. Seven. It abruptly stops. A silence comes over the room again. The Muzak stops. The ceiling does not rise. You notice something now for the first time about this space. It's silent. A deep silence. As if underground. You hear nothing. No rumble, no tremble, no outside voices. Like in some sort of sensory tank, you only see, you only smell, but you cannot hear. That is, until you hear a very quick and short sound, not unlike the rip that you heard in the night that Rachel disappeared. As you shift now, you find yourself standing in a hallway. This hallway is long, doors on all sides, but figures brush past you on the left and on the right as they bump into you, quickly moving your body. People in suits with no care at all for you or you standing in the center of this hall. A quick collision sends papers flying into the air as young Miss Hawkins bends down. Do you help this individual? Uh, sorry, sorry about that. I, do you know where we are? Uh, as you look up, grabbing these papers for said individual, you are met by a blank slate. The figure's shape is clearly looking at you. You can feel the contempt that it holds, even though there are no features. Just an empty space where a face should be. The figure stands with the papers, with its right hand creating a crevice within its body. It slides the papers in underneath its skin, oh. closing the skin around them. It's a good spot for that. Adjusts their suit and moves on, joining the bipedal highway once again. Hey, don't don't mind the brokers. Who is that? It's a moody bunch. Sorry to keep you waiting. You were summoned, right? I I fell through a hole. You turn to see a young man donning a white suit, standing in the center of the hallway, effortlessly flowing in between the quickly moving bodies. Thank God you have a face. His hand reaches out. Uh, Sky Hawkins. Scott, but you can call me Scotty. Scott, Scotty? Welcome to Mammon. M Mammon, what, where, 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 where yeah, is follow, that? Where follow is... me. Okay, yeah. Sure. Scotty turns and begins to walk down the hallway, again effortlessly flowing in between the moving sets to the left and right of figures. I'm sure you have questions. Actually, I have a lot. Uh, I won't answer the important ones. Great. Great. Did I... Of course. Of course you want it. So what do you got? Um, where is... Uh, what did you call this place again? Mammon. Mammon. W where is that? Oh, uh, that one's a little too important. Okay. Why was I summoned? Oh, you got business. Not with me. See, I'm, I'm, j I'm just traveling you through the area here. I, I gotta get you. It's down this way. What are you... Is this your job? Yeah. How long have you been doing this job? He continues walking away from you, his head turned. Every once in a while, he glances over his shoulder. You see there's a grin on his face. No apparent sign of danger anywhere. Uh, just continuing to move past all these doors. This hallway is ever long. One directional. Moving that way and behind you. You can't see the end of it on either side, but every ten feet you pass a door. On each side, that door wears a symbol. Symbols you've never seen before. Uh, what was that? Uh, wh what's up with these doors? Can what, we just what? go into one of them? Oh, well, you have a special door that you're going to. We'll, we'll be there soon. We're headed that way. But what are these doors? Well, these doors go places you're not allowed to go. Oh. What, what about these people? That what don't are, have... No, they're not people. They're brokers. Brokers? What do yeah. you mean, brokers? Like, what does that mean? What? You're asking the wrong questions. Come on, let's go. What are the right questions? Uh, you'll know them when you ask them. This is the worst. Uh, I agree. I've been out here a little while. Waiting for me? No, 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 no. I, I, I travel a lot of people through here. I, I, 
You know, I, I, I'm actually dead. Oh. It's really nice to see a familiar face. Am I? Well, not familiar as in, no, just familiar as in human. Wait. Uh, am I dead? <laughs> That'd be the shit. Uh, no, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> no, so, yeah, I died once. Uh, you know, it was real, real shit. Uh, it sucked so bad. I was trapped uh, in the body of this really hot girl. It was cool for a little bit, but then it was really lonely. I got really sad, but now here I have purpose. What do you mean trapped? I, I was trapped. Were you a hu- is that when you were human? No, I was dead. You were dead living in a hot girl's body. Yeah, that. What was her name? You know, I don't even remember. It feels like a lifetime ago, but I don't think it was that long. Do you, what do you, do you, was the person's name Rachel? <laughs> no, I, know, I would know that much. Do, do you know anyone named Rachel? No, I, I don't believe I do. I'm looking for a friend that disappeared. That's none of my business. I'm not allowed to get into stuff like that. But I mean, it's always interesting to have a little bit of conversation, right? Well, we're, I mean, we're talking and, and honestly, this has been great, but this is our stop. Oh, okay. Are you leaving now, or do we go in together? He pulls a large collection of keys from his belt buckle. As he brings the keys up to the door, the keys themselves have a very strange shape to them. You recognize them as keys. They sound like keys. You know in your mind they are keys, but they don't necessarily have a look. And there is no keyhole in the door. Uh, irrelevantly, it pulls it up, turns, the door begins to unlatch. Yeah, I'm sorry it had to end this way, but, you know, nice to have someone to talk to. It's what been you, a while. Well, what do you mean, in this way? What, what, what do you mean that by, by that? Shift. The door is now closed. You stand in a room, looking directly at an upside-down U with a dot in the, center, in the center, similar to the one that you saw inside Rachel's diary. Is there one dot or two dots? Only one dot. The one I found in Rachel's diary, that had two dots. She said it was on someone's tent. We was will it? quickly cut to the other side of town hours later as young Billy Baker makes his way into the Kolok Mall. Billy, what are you doing and where are you going? I'm headed to the comic shop. Great. With haste. With haste, as you make your way quickly up to the second floor of the mall. And then I stop. Do I have any tokens? Yes, you do. Do I have three tokens? You do, Billy Baker. The feeling of anxiety rushes over me, knowing that the cops could be after me. I want to use premonition to see if I sense any danger ahead. Billy Baker stands at the top of this stairway, focuses himself, looking down deep within, searching, searching for a voice that he spoke to not long before. Billy. Hello again. Yes. Again. Again, again, again. Uh, M Mickey's dad, he shot a guy. Yes. Uh, I think because we were asking too many questions and, and the guy overheard. Is anyone after me right now? Yes, but they are not close, Billy. Do they know that I'm in the mall? No, Billy. So I'm safe here. For the time being, Billy. Okay, thanks. Billy, as you come to and look forward, you realize you're standing just in the middle of an open area in the mall. People are stopping to look at you. Someone reaches out their hand. Are you, are you okay, son? Yeah. You're, you're bleeding. Oh, yeah, I tripped. <laughs> you, 
you were you were just standing there in the middle of the you were talking to yourself and you started bleeding from Wait, are you coma boy? Do we need to call your parents sir? No, I'm just I'm headed up to the comic shop. They let me come up here alone sometimes. I thought they said you were okay. Oh, I'm fine. I just sometimes sometimes I just get real sad and I think, man, I wonder what happened with everybody else while I was in a coma. But <laughs> it's, it's not important. Oh, oh okay, we Take care of yourself, kid. Yeah, I'm gonna go do fun stuff now. Like, I was sad there for a sec, but now, you know. Okay. The world keeps spinning. Blood is dripping down from Billy Baker's face as you see a small drop travel from your nose down to the floor as it splashes. Hey, thanks for checking on me, though. I appreciate that. The man nods, quite confused, and walks away. You see the comic book shop not too far away, and you can see from this vantage point. Tibby is already inside. I knew it. Rush in to talk to Tibby. As you rush in, you are greeted by none other than Scott Jansen, the local comic book clerk uh, here at the store. You talk to him about once a week. He's currently at the counter, ignoring Tibby as Tibby continues to ramble on and on and on. Hey, Scott. Oh, hey, what's up, Billy? How's it going, man? What's up, man? Uh, Tibby. Um, can I talk to you over here or something? Billy, are you going to pick up your pool or are you just here to hang uh, out? Yeah, I'll get it in a minute, Scott. Uh, we're just, we're hanging. <laughs> oh, so you're, you're just, just chilling? Yeah, Not going to buy chilling. anything? Nah, man. You do that every week. You just come in. Well, I mean. You never buy anything? I don't have a job. Man, I mean, I got a paper boy job, but I, I, I use yeah, you have for, a job. You, you right, literally have a job. My parents, my parents make me save that money. I, I have a job, but like, I don't have like a job job. I get like two dollars a day, man. I can't just be buying comics. All right, all right, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna have words about this. Like, you, Do you keep want me coming to not hang out here. Because if I, if you're gonna keep hanging out, maybe you could work a little bit. Okay. Well, also, I could just leave, and your comic shop, your comic shop, could be empty, and that doesn't look great for your business. I mean. All right. Well played, Billy Baker. But just try not to mess anything up back there. And if no, you're gonna pull something not. off the shelf and read it, you gotta buy it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. No more flipping through and then putting them back. You you mess up the pages. All right. And. Dude, I don't know what you told Tibby today, but he is... What did Tibby tell you? He says a lot of things, but he's wound up, asking a lot of questions. Questions usually Tibby doesn't ask. What kind of questions? Well, I've never known Tibby to give a shit about Morrison, I'll tell you that much. Okay, cool. Grant, Grant Morrison? Yeah, Grant, Grant Morrison. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. He didn't Tibby talk to you about, starts like... pulling on the back of your shirt. Come okay. on, man, let's go. Like... Yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah, fuck you, Scott. As Tibby walks in yeah. back. <laughs> no, actually, Scott, you're really cool, man. Uh, thanks for talking to me. You're the best. I'm just kidding. I'm trying to. Ah, yeah. oh, fuck Scott. No, uh, no, no, I wasn't telling him anything though. I was just talking to him Dude, about Tibby. Yeah. Updates, man. Okay. Don't tell anyone anything I've told you. But what? You told me to get you... research. You want me to find out information. Yes. I came here to pump Scott for information. You have a really important job to find information. Okay. But you can't let anyone know what this information is for, okay? Say that we're, like, writing some stupid movie or, or book or something. Oh, they'll tell me that we're writing our script? Exactly. We're going to send it off to Hollywood. Listen, Tibby. Yeah. If you tell the wrong people the stuff I've told you, you could die. Yeah. Anyway, what'd you find out? Did you find anything? Let me deal with that information for just a little bit. Dude, processing. Uh, okay, so. I, I mean, I didn't find much. Spit it out, man. What'd you find? I, I, I'm not much. Okay. What if? Mr. Nobody is real, and he trapped Rachel inside a Dada painting in Paris. No, definitely not that. 100% not that. Okay. 
Yeah, I guess that wouldn't explain why we can't remember her. I like where your head's at, but I have new info, Tibby. Okay. It's kind of like a timeline thing, maybe. So I broke into the prosecutor's office, Mr. Jewell. You know how you broke in? Yeah. What the? He caught me too, but like, so they have all this on camera, so it's like a real bad thing, because like the cops are probably after me right now. Am I an accomplice? I mean, technically, probably, but that's why you can't oh, tell anybody. Billy, man. Cut. I'm not, I'm not gonna rat on you, dude. Listen. What? The? I got I got keys I'm and a I got into. Criminal. Yeah, but it's like. It's cool though, cause like we're on the we're on the good side. Dad's gonna kick my ass. Don't tell your dad. I'm not gonna tell you my don't dad. Have to you don't tell said your dad that everything. You're, I'm not gonna tell him. You said that you're in trouble because I caught you on video. Someone else will tell my dad. Your dad's gonna kick your ass because I was being a shithead. You just said I was an accomplice. Yeah, but you don't tell people you're an accomplice, Tibby. Then I'm not gonna tell him. Then why? Then how am I an accomplice? Just because the law says you're an accomplice doesn't mean... Dude! No, I mean the law would technically say you're an accomplice, but they don't know that info. It doesn't matter, Tibby. The thing is, I broke into his office. I got these papers. He had this folder. Rachel exists in this world. It's just that she died 11 years ago when she was like five or something. And he Whoa. had like some letter from the council that was like the city council. It was like, blah, blah, blah. You, you can't... We don't, we don't accept. I don't even know what it meant. Council? Yeah. Huh. I've heard of it. I mean, there's like this, you like the city council? Yeah, like the Kolok city council. That's weird. Is that like any, any book you've ever read? I, I mean... No, I mean, for a minute I was thinking it was maybe like that Hitchcock movie, Long Live the Flesh. Uh-huh. The girl disappears, and when she disappears, nobody can remember Uh-huh. And then what? What happens? I, I mean, that that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, Shit, dude. I'm sorry, man. There's not too much out there. Um... What about this? Have you ever heard of a Gorgon? Like Medusa? I don't know. Is it? I mean, I think it's in the same, like, I think Gorgon's like a family. I think they're like three or four or something like that. G Greek mythology stuff. Do you ever pay attention in class? Don't you have a tutor? Yeah, but, like, why would we go over Greek mythology? It's like, hey, you woke up from a coma. Let's catch up. Here's Greek mythology. Here's the important stuff. Greek it's like mythology. the foundation of all of the stories that we like. Hero's Journey. Oh, I mean, that was before. That was pre... Whatever, Billy. I'm learning, like, Shakespeare shit. Okay. I didn't count you or into... I mean, I'm not. Oh, okay. It's so just you don't school. really know any of it. Why are... We keep getting sidetracked. Oh, sidetracked. Sorry. Um, I think we should ask Scott. How are we going to ask Scott without him asking us questions back? Dude, he's, he works at a comic book shop. Nerds like us ask him questions all the time. Okay, well, you Look, follow him. I mean, I'll ask the questions. Have you heard? Okay. What? You know, I've heard stories about the comic book shop being haunted. What? The comic book shop. I mean, yeah, but where's this going? Maybe it has something to do with the crazy shit that you're talking about. I don't, I don't believe in ghosts, man. This is like science It's not stuff. just ghosts. Right? Like, people have been hearing things and... What kind of things? Just, like, voices and stuff. And, like, random pages of comic books and stuff. Scott will deny all of it, but I've heard from multiple sources. Multiple. All right, Tibby, shut up real quick. Do you hear that? You hear those people talking? We're in a mall. Yeah. Yeah, voices. Oh, good point. Do you think that's what they thought? Probably. Why didn't they just realize they were in a mall? I don't know, dude. People are stupid. Oh, that's weird. Okay. This one time... No, I won't get into it. We'll keep getting sidetracked. Let's go talk to, St go talk to Scott. Right. Hey, uh, Scott, I got some no. more... Hey, Scott. 
Yeah, what's up, kid? What's up, dude? Uh, nice try. Uh, dang it. Uh, so, random question for you. Um, uh huh. Let's say so. Tibby and I we're working on a script. Yeah. Um. Tell me if you see any plot holes here. So this girl doesn't matter how, but she like gets abducted or whatever. Okay. Um. But, like, it feels like some sort of sci-fi script, you know? It's like, oh, weird things happening, you know? Something's glowing off in the distance, and then she's gone, right? Okay? So then everyone forgets who she is. Like, no one remembers who she is except the people that witnessed her getting taken. Everyone's all like, I don't know. I've never heard of that person, right? And okay. then, And then here's where it gets really good. Okay. Um. We find we find her journal and it's got all these okay. clues and it's like blah blah blah. Yeah. Find me, right? And that's like a good hook of like okay, the movie begins. Oh, so this is a movie? Yeah, it's a, it's a script. I, I just haven't seen it. Oh no, you're oh you're writing a script? Yeah, we're writing a script. Scott reaches behind the counter and grabs himself some M and M's and starts chewing on them as he looks at. Yeah, please continue. This is great. Now go ahead, tell me about your movie. Were you listening to any of that? I missed a lot of it. I wasn't really paying attention, but now I'm really interested. Go okay, ahead. Keep so telling me about your movie. Anyway, we find her journal. It's like, come find me. But then, like, I break into somebody's law office, mm, and I yeah. find out that, like, she died 11 so when you years say you, ago. You're saying you. You like, wrote yourself in the script? Uh, yeah. Classic. Yeah, totally. So, <laughs> so this, is a, this is a 15-year-old <laughs> coma boy. No, I mean it's like it's, broke it's into like a law me, office. but I'm like the hero. Oh, of course, girl he just goes shares missing. My name. Fifteen year old coma boy finds. It's not the actually girl. me. It's just like I see myself in him, right? It's 1991, kid. Make the girl save herself. Yeah, totally. So she saved. So let's say she saves herself, but like, what are the plot holes there? Then like, why are you even in the story? What? What's your purpose in the story? You put know. yourself in the story. Maybe she like. Maybe she has a crush on me back. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> do you see this was like a... Uh, so you wrote, yourself, you wrote yourself into a story of a girl going missing. You're the hero, but you are yourself, a 15-year-old coma kid who lived in a coma for 10 years, somehow overcomes all that adversity. No, it's not me. And also makes this high school girl fall in love with you at the end of it. I mean, outside of just how weird and creepy that is, I mean, your script is shit, kid. Yeah, but like, okay, so let's critique it. What are the, what are the plot holes? Like, where, if you were the main character, what would you do? I'd remove myself from this story. It's not your story. It's the girl who goes missing. But like, but like, she leaves the journal, and it's like you need to save me, or like something, or maybe that's what I imply from it. Maybe that's what you imply from it. Maybe that's a ruse. What if she didn't write it? You think I'm being set up? <laughs> in, the, in the script? In the script? <laughs> yeah, in the Shit. script. Fuck. Huh. I don't know, kid. Uh, yeah, well. You should definitely finish that script, though. I'd love to hang it up here at the shop. Yeah, we'll, we'll finish it. Yeah. Good talk. I'll help you option it we out. Just, we got, Tibby and I, we got... Maybe we'll take it Writer's over to Portland block. and see if anybody's interested in making a comic book out of it. Tibby, this would be a pretty good story. <laughs> Billy, I think he's fucking with you. Yeah. Okay, Scott. <laughs> yeah. Coma boy. Shouldn't be having ideas. <laughs> we cut to the other side of town as Mickey Jones makes her way into her apartment. You saw this just a few hours ago. It is the same. No one's been by, no one's searched the premises. It is as you left it. What are you looking for, Mickey Jones? I walk up to where my apartment door is and I listen first before going in to make sure no one's inside, either my dad or the cops. Roll for brains, Mickey Jones. Difficulty of five. This one. As you put your head up against the door to see if there might be any sounds coming from inside. Got a three. 
You have three tokens available, Mickey Jones. Um, I'll just take the three. Wonderful. You don't hear anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It All appears right. that the coast is clear. I'm sure that it does. Uh, I go in. Great. As you walk into your apartment, it doesn't seem that anything's out of the ordinary. Your father's empty beer cans lay by the couch. The TV left on. The dishes overrun. How does it make you feel, Mickey Jones? It's pretty much how it looks all the time. A mess. But how does it make you feel? It's weird being here knowing what I saw my dad, not saw him do in the bar, but what I believe he did. Um, but I'm looking to grab some things and then get out as quickly as possible. First, I want to go into my dad's room also because I want to look through his things. As you make your way towards your father's room, now this room is not ever opened. It's always closed, and he doesn't sleep in it either. Mm -hmm. He sleeps on the couch. You don't put too much thought into it. You just assume that that's where he ends up after a long night of drinking. As you open the door, you see a man ducked over in the corner, searching through your father's closet. He turns to look directly at you as the sound of the door startles him. As he turns, you see that in his right hand is a gun. Dude, um, look, I'm not looking for any trouble. If you just want money, we don't have any. The man stands, very tall, very imposing figure at about six foot three broad shoulders. Look, whatever you're looking for, just take it and go. We don't have a lot. I'm not looking for any trouble. He puts the gun into its holster. <sighs> Sorry to startle you, Miss Jones. What are you doing in my house? I work with your father. Okay. Are you security? Yeah. Yeah. Work with your father in security. Mm -hmm. Just came to collect a couple of his things. What kind of things do you need from him? Just a couple of his things he asked me to bring down to the station for him. So he's at the station? Yes. What did he ask for? Miss Jones, are you aware that your father's currently being held at the police station for witnessing a murder? Well, sorry. Let me rephrase that. Witnessing a suicide. Uh. Your father watched a man die today. He's quite shaken up by it. Yeah, I'm sure that he Has he, he contacted is... you? No, I haven't heard from him. I'd just like to collect a couple things, if you don't mind, and take them to him. I just want to know what things, if you don't mind. I do. You're in my house, in my dad's room. What is it that you're looking for? I'm just gonna stand here because I live here. Your house, you reside here. You sleep in a bed across the hall, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not yours though. It's not yours? More so than yours, or your father's. What is that supposed to mean? It means I work with your father and I'm here to collect some things. I'd really like to not explain any more than that. Well, I'm just gonna stand right here then and watch. Mickey Jones will roll her grit. Difficulty of seven. Twelve. As you stand defiantly, the man relaxes back a little bit, leans up against the wall. You know, he said you've got a lot of spunk. 
Yeah, I get it from him. Real pain in the ass. Yeah, I've heard that before, too. Yeah. A lot like your old pops, huh? Your pops ever tell you about what he does? I know that he works security for Synchronity. Yeah? Do you know anything else? Oh, you're asking me if I know anything else. Will you work with him? Yeah, security. Why do you keep saying it like that? It's my job. To make sure uh, everything's okay around here. Around here or at Synchronity? Kolok. Okay. Why is that your business? It's not my business. It's my job. But you work with my dad at Synchronity. I work security with your father. I'm not allowed to say here or there or where. Okay. I'm not gonna get a lot out of you, are I? Am I? Fuck no. Why don't you just take what you came here for and leave? Maybe you can help me find it. Well, if you want to tell me what it is, then sure. I didn't notice many heels in your closet. No, I don't wear heels. Yeah. Figured. If you're looking for a pair, the mall's right down the street. Oh, they're not for me. I don't care what you're doing with them. We're tying up loose ends. For what? Your dad could be in a lot of trouble. For witnessing a suicide? For shooting a man in the head, Mickey. And what makes you think that that's what happened? Because he told me, Mickey. And why should I believe you? You don't have to. But you seem a little shaken up. Like you know something that you're not telling me. What do I need to tell you? What are you to me? Sure you didn't talk to your pops today, Mickey? Nope. You don't seem too surprised by the fact that... I just said your dad shot a man. You must think he's a real piece of work, huh? I don't know what you're trying to get out of me. My dad gets himself into trouble all the time. I don't know what he does when he's out during the day and I'm at school. I know he's drinking. You don't put it past him on shooting a man in the head, huh? That was a suicide. Oh, I wonder sometimes what my kids think of me and putting this in a light that's Who a exactly hard for me to are swallow. you? Like a name? Oh, I'm not giving you that. So why should I give you any information? You don't have to, but I can take it. How are you going to do that? You got some balls on you, Miss Jones, I'll tell you that much. Well, my dad always did want a son. Mickey, huh? Mickey Jones will roll her charm. Difficulty of six. Why it gotta be charm, though? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a one. Mickey Jones has three tokens available. What was the difficulty of that? It was a six, but let us not forget that everything happens on a sliding scale. Mm -hmm. I'll use my three tokens. It's probably a good idea. As the man walks forward, spreading apart his coat to reveal his gun once again, hands on his hips. You don't want to know what happens to little girls like you that get in my way. Are you trying to raise the death toll of today? Is that in your best interest? Definitely not. I don't get paid for that kind of work. No, but I will beat you to a bloody pulp. I'll leave you here gasping for air in front of your house. Someone will think they're trying to get back at your dad all the shit he's done. I'll make sure of that. They may be able to recognize your pretty little face, maybe not. Depends on how good a mood I'm in. 
whether or not I use the butt of my gun on your face or not. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling... I'm feeling like I'll just use my fist today. Why don't you just take what you came for and go? That's the attitude I was looking for. The man turns his back to you and walks back over to the closet, paying no mind to you whatsoever as he begins digging through the floor of the closet. You hear a sound of ripping as you watch the carpet from the closet floor pulled back and a door open. As he reaches, pulls the gun back out and looks over his shoulder at you, waving for you to go out into the hall. I go, I go into my room. As Mickey Jones crosses the hall, closes the door, you hear the sound of the man digging. Things moving around, scraping on the floor. And that's when you hear him dragging something as it rips the carpet up as it falls along the floor. And then you hear the door slam. You pause for a moment, listening, but you hear nothing. It appears that the coast is in fact clear. I want to go back into my dad's room and look at whatever he was looking in under the carpet. As you go into your father's room and go towards the edge where the closet is, you notice that a large doorway has been lifted up, revealing a small set of stairs that reveal about a four-foot kind of uh, hallway underneath your apartment. As you look down, following the trail of light from the room coming through the window, Mickey Jones, you see a large, empty kind of indent where the dust has fallen all around something. But this area remained clean of what appeared to be a, about a five foot wide case. But it's no longer there. I want to look around to see if there's anything else. Nothing in there, no. Okay. Um, I'm going to go into my room. What I came here for is a duffel bag under my bed with an uh, extra set of clothes, toothbrush, other essentials for any nights that I didn't want to spend at home. Mickey Jones grabs her runaway bag from underneath her bed. As you go to exit the apartment, you take a look. You have a moment where you feel that you understand that everything you knew about your life before is now different and will never be the same. As the door closes behind you, Mickey Jones, where would you like to head next? Mm. I'm going to go check on Marcus and go to his house to see if he's there. Great. We now cut to Mammon. Sky Hawkins now stands in a smoke-filled room tinted green from a small desk lamp with a green glass shade. A slender woman with long, bony fingers leans over her desk, her face hidden from the light under her jet black hair as she writes in red pen on pieces of paper written in a language that Sky Hawkins does not recognize. After signing a document, she stamps it with a large red ink stamp that sits just next to her. The sound of her raspy voice emits from a plume of cigarette smoke that escapes the slivers of air between her dark black strands. As the smoke rises, it sounds as if the voice is flying up with it, escaping into the air around you. The woman motions. Sit. Uh, okay. Yeah, just like, anywhere? Just, uh, this. The woman points to a chair in front of her desk. Cool. I'll sit here. Hi, Sky Hawkins. It's stuck here for like seven, eight hours. Sky Hawkins. Form E-N-O-L-C-R-81. That's your signature, yes? Uh, the woman hands you a sheet, and on this sheet you see a bunch of writing in that same foreign language. But your name at the bottom 
and a signature, though not your own, is, in fact, Sky Hawkins. And above that line is the name and signature, that of Rachel Jewell. The woman quickly brings the paper back to her desk, stamps it red, opens a filing cabinet, and slides it inside. Whoa, 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 wait, one sec. I, I didn't sign that. As co-signer on said document, you have one full moon cycle to pay the debt in full, or we will be on said document. No, wait. You'll be forced to foreclose. Do you have on your persons, or are you aware of any items that belong to signee Rachel Jewell? These items are property of Mammon and shall be handed over immediately. Do you have on your persons, or are you aware of any items? No, no, I, I don't have anything of Rachel Jules. Well, well, I'm the co-signer for that contract that she's on? With the wave of a hand, shift. Sky Hawkins stands in a small room covered in blue flowered wallpaper. A lone lamp sits atop a black dresser. The drawers are in fact empty. A piece of art sits upon a wall. It's an etching that features the face of a man on a fish jumping out of the sea. Sky turns to see in this room a window, but its perspective perplexes her. It appears to be blocked by something that appears larger than it should be, filling up the entire view of this window. It's the cover of New Mutants 98. Introducing the lethal Deadpool. Sky Hawkins sits in the room alone, trying to make out what lie in front of her. And on that note, we will take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to Colock 1991. It means the world to me that you're watching, and uh, I, I really, really do hope you're enjoying the show. We've all worked really hard on this. Now, on the show, I'm playing kind of a character as the GM, so I wanted to run you through some things as me, Zach, the producer and uh, co-founder of this company, to tell you all the ways that you can support the show while it's happening live. Something that's really important for us here at Hyper RPG is that you get to be a part of everything we do. Sometimes that's financial, sometimes it's not. Now, all of these shows are paid for directly by us. You, you fund them. The audience funds these shows. These are almost 100% funded by the audience. So when you come in and you think, oh, this is really great, think about subscribing. Or you can go to oneshot.straylogic.com and you can get tokens for the players. These tokens allow them to do special abilities that you'll see on their character, uh, their little character blips that come up on screen, or it allows them to boost their dice rolls. You can also add evidence to rumors. This is where you get to a little bit, be a little bit creative. You get to add on special things that you're, uh, you're reading about, these rumors, you make that up. It's up to you. You get to build onto the world as it's happening. And then we do big giveaways at the end of the show. And when we hit our goal for the show, we also do a giveaway where we bring someone out of the chat and into the game. Now, you can go to discord.gg slash hyperrpg to join our Discord role-playing room for this show. We actually have people that are set up in our Discord role-playing people in the town. And then I'll bring them out of the Discord and put them on the show itself. That's one of the ways you can interact non-financially. We also have polls that will come up during the show and things like that. We're always trying to push the form 
format here at Hyper RPG to get you involved and make the show a collaborative process between myself, the players, and you in the audience. So thank you so much for watching and for supporting, and make sure to keep watching Colock 1991 every Monday night at 6 p.m. This is not a new story. This is merely another chapter of an endless strife. A tale of blood that's been spilling for millennia. In a fringe galactic arm, centuries-long warp storms cease, making its resource-rich planets traversable again and ripe for conquest. The Imperium of Man launch a crusade to reclaim old human colonies established before the storms began. The ruinous powers, knowing of the weakened warp, flood the quadrant, seeking to plague every corner with chaos. The Tau and the Eldari form a temporary alliance to rid the Imperium and the Ruinous Powers from the untainted galaxy. And the Orcs, drawn to the smell of blood and riches, seek glory through the crucible of battle. The race to control the system begins. This is not a new story, but it is our story. Welcome to the Grim Dark Dawn. Sky Hawkins hears on the other side of the window the sound of voices. Like I said, Sky Hawkins sees this large image of a comic book cover filling her view, but she hears the sounds of voices, of movement and things. Hello? C can someone hear me? Hey! Hey, help! I, I, I can hear you! Can, can you hear me? God. We go to the comic book shop now as Scott has continued listening to the ridiculous ramblings of young Billy Baker and Tibby. As Tibby starts to move back just a little bit. Hey, uh, you hear that? Hear what? The ghost. No. I'm, I'm, I think I hear a ghost. Wait. That does sound like it's coming from in here. Hello? Hello? Billy Baker will roll his brains with a difficulty of five. Ooh, that's uh, going to be tough for Billy. Two. Billy Baker has two tokens. Mm, I'll use them. Billy, you hear this voice coming toward, from towards the back of the stores. You start walking in that general direction. Tibby's like, I knew it. I, I heard so many things, dude. Scott, your place is fucking haunted, man. I think it's just like a telephone off the hook, maybe. It's not haunted. Would you kids cut it out with that crap? Wait, what the hell was that? I, wait, do you all hear that? Uh, no. Wait, I can, I can hear you. Hey, can you hear me? Tibby, let's go check it out. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hello? What, if it's an actual ghost, though, like, how do we... What, what if it's that girl that you said went missing? Why would she be Is in the she comic haunting shop? the comic book store? Did, Did she you... like comic books? No, not at all. That'd be like oh. a really lame place to haunt. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, pretty lame. I think it's just like a phone off the hook, probably. Okay. But, like, there's no phones in here, except behind the counter. All right, honestly, guys, this is kind of freaking me out. I mean, I've heard things in here before, but I just assumed it was, you know, the mall. Like, You're people. sounding like a baby, Scott. <laughs> You're scared too, kid. Like, Definitely not. Scott turns and goes to lock the door of the comic book store. Like, just in case. I don't... If there's something back there, I don't want him getting out. He goes behind the counter and grabs himself a pair of brass knuckles. 
He looks as ridiculous as you think he would. All right, well, Scott's got this. Yeah. Uh, right. Why don't we just check it out? I don't really believe in ghosts, so I'm sure it's nothing. You hear the voices again. Please! Please help me get out of here! Yeah, I'm gonna I can hear you guys. I'm not a ghost. I'm going to search around for that sound. Billy Baker will roll his brains with a difficulty of four. Three. And you don't have a plus one on that or anything at all? Heck no. Billy cannot find it as he continues searching around, probably because he's far too short to get the proper vantage point of the situation, as it's Scott who walks forward and you're like, wait, is that? Oh, no, guys, this is no big deal. I think I just left the TV on. Oh, my God, I was getting scared for nothing. Yeah, I told you guys. No, no, it's not just a TV. Wait, is the TV talking to me? Scott reaches to the television and starts to pull a comic book off of the front of the comic book as off the front of the television as revealed inside is a woman looking back at him. I don't know what movie this is. What the hell am I watching? It's not a movie. Hi, I, I'm Sky Hawkins. I'm stuck in this room and I, I don't know how to get out. Billy Baker now sees his friend Sky Hawkins on the front of the TV. Oh my God. What? Are Sky? You... Billy, is that you? Yeah. Uh, what are you doing in the TV in the comic shop? Oh, you know, I just thought I'd take a little break from everything that's happening. What do you think? I don't know why I'm in this TV in a com... I'm in a comic book shop? I'm in a comic book shop. I'm in a TV in a comic book shop? Right now, I'm just in a room that I can't get out of. Timmy. What the fuck? Remember? I told you, Sky... She got, like, sucked into a hole? That's Sky Hawkins. You recorded her on T... There's no VCR on no, this No, she's thing. talking to us. It's clearly not recorded. Scott goes behind the television... Whoa! ...and unplugs Whoa. it. Hey! No, no, no! Dude, you're gonna kill her. The TV remains on. Fuck, 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 fuck. Scott, you just screwed yourself over so bad, buddy. When I get out of this TV, I'm gonna beat your ass. I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Right. So, now that I can't be destroyed, we all know that we need to get me out of here. Oh. Is that clear? If anyone touches this TV again, I swear to God, you're going to have to worry about more than ghosts haunting your ass. It'll be me. Every night, in your dreams, when you close your eyes. Do you got that, Scott? Uh, hi, Sky. I don't think we know each other. Wait, have I seen you here at our... No. No. But you haven't seen me at all. Okay. Um, oh. Dude, Sky's a nerd. No, I'm not, Billy. How? Shut your Where, where and how are you, are you on my television right now? I don't know that. I, I don't know how any of this is happening. What's it look like to you? Do you look like you're inside glass? Uh, there was something like blocking. This like it's I see this giant window. There was a comic book that was blocking it. it. It's just a window for me. It's not like glass. What? I don't know where I am and I heard your guys' voices. I guess I was summoned into this different realm where people have like no faces and they're businessmen. And then I met this guy who said he's dead and he was living inside of a hot girl's body, which I kind of think might be Rachel. I don't know. Nothing has been made clear, but they said I'm a co-signer to some sort of contract that Rachel's name is on. And I just need to get out of here. I only have one day, uh, or one moon. The girl was smoking a lot, and she sounded more like this, and she was talking to me. It was pretty, it was a pretty good voice. But yeah, I was, sorry, um, I need to get out of here, because I think I have a, uh, a countdown for what? how long I'm going to be able to exist in this realm. I mean, we we could grab the TV, but I don't think that well, gets... that's my TV, man. Well, I'm going to take... I, I don't gonna, want it. I'm going to no, take it. I don't want it. It's my TV now. Uh, my yeah, fucking comic book shop was haunted. I mean, it's not did, mine, but... Scott, can you stop being a pansy for just like two seconds? I'm talking to Billy. 
If I don't get Billy. out of here, I think I'm gonna. Should I? Be stuck in here forever. It's not. No, Scott. It's it's just a coincidence. It's nothing like. Uh, the script. It's it's not. It's all fucking true. <laughs> Listen, Scott. You can't tell a high anybody. Girl's never gonna you fall can't tell anybody. You, Billy. Ever. It's not gonna happen, dude, man. Keep your voice down. Sky's listening. You fucking. He's right. I, I, I agree with this idiot. So some girl went missing. Rachel would never fall in love with you, Billy. Don't be it's stupid. You, some... Dude. You piss your Scott. pants every 3.5 seconds. Come on. But, but she she takes a genuine interest in me, and no one else does. Because she's getting paid to. You realize how twisted this is, right? In your head? Yeah, but I mean. I'm going to hit my growth spurt soon, I'm sure. Scott Jansen falls to the floor, his head between his legs, as he begins to breathe heavily. Is this guy okay? I want to, like, come down to his level. Listen, Scott, if you tell anybody what you saw, no one's you could die. No one's going to... You could die. Tibby leans in. You could fucking die, man. And if I don't get out of this TV pretty soon, Scott, I'm probably going to kill you myself. Hi, Sky. Timmy here. Uh, I pretty much figured all this out. I'm going to help you guys uh, find your friend that's missing. That's what I like to hear, Tibby. I all like right. this guy. Tibby. <laughs> Tibby, help me. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab the TV. Hey, be careful. Okay. That. Don't shake me too much. And then, Tibby, I need your help. We're going to smash it on the ground. What? what? No, Billy, no. <laughs> <laughs> what if her soul's trapped in there? Soul? Dude, you sound stupid. You sound stupid, Billy. Why are you going to crush the TV? I'm in it. For a This is the only way I can communicate to you. Once well, I'm... How else am I going to get you out if Coma you're trapped boy. inside? Long live the new flesh. What does that mean? Yeah, what's that? It's all some Videodrome thing. You were in a coma. Yeah. Oh, your parents wouldn't let you watch it anyway. What? It's a Cronenberg movie. Uh huh. She's gonna give us tumors. What? No, no. Are no. you gonna give us tumors, Sky? No! I'm not gonna give you. Well, listen, if we keep talking like this, I'm gonna give you two black eyes, um, chop your body up into a bunch of little itty bitty pieces, throw it in the river, and then uh, go to your parents' house. I turn the and volume just, down I'm a little bit more. I'm going to just keep on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hit the mute button. All right. So Tibby, what are we? What are we? No, what are we gonna do? Let's let's take it. Let's take it to Marcus's house. He's the smartest guy I know, and he's on our side. Marcus Bennett. Yeah. Well, actually, I could Sky probably. Sky Hawkins. This is probably so handle this. fucking. Co- no, what? It's important that we're not seen together, man. I, I want you to come with me because you got my back, and I appreciate all the research you've been doing. But like. This is scary stuff. This is worse than being Robin. No, oh, man, you're like, you're like, you're like Alfred, dude. You're back at like, you're like back at the Batcave doing cool stuff for me, like covert ops. I want to be Wally West. I haven't, I haven't read that one. <sighs> is that Why Robin? Are we even friends? No. All right. Whatever you need, man. All right, man. Uh. Let me know if you can think of any other, like, what's this all about? I don't know how the TVs work. So well, you unplugged it. Yeah, and it's still on. It's magic. It's not magic. How is it not? You said know, your friend sure disappeared. There's some sort of science. And nobody can remember? And now you got a TV that's unplugged and your friend's trapped in it? Oh, maybe not your friend, just a high schooler, you know, but... I want to unmute the TV. I can kill you! <laughs> Um, Sky, hey. I think I think we should go to Marcus's house. He might know what to do. All right, how are you? How are you getting me there? Does someone have a car? I guess I'm just gonna carry you. Oh, I I've seen your arms. Is I know, me? Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Scott, can you do me a solid? Yeah, I can. I I, I can. Please. Scott. I can lock. I can lock up and. Oh, thank you. <sighs> thank you. How am I gonna explain this to my boss? Maybe. Hmm. Scott, w- will you help me uh, carry this? And like, if anybody asks, you you're just selling me this TV, and you're helping me get it to Marcus's house. I'll be so real quiet. We too. can play. Yeah, just just Nintendo. stay really still, so it looks like there's like an image frozen on the TV or something. 
Um, because okay. you're not plugged in, and if we're walking around with a TV that's got like somebody on it, I get it. Okay, sorry, <laughs> this is <laughs> that's your pose. <laughs> Take a <laughs> snap a photo. How about, uh, Bill, you just put your jacket on top of it so we don't yeah. have to look at it. Yeah, for sure. So I, I do. So the room goes dark. As you hear the sound, muffled sound, Miss Hawkins, of them moving you out of the comic book store and towards Scott's car. We will now cut to the house of young Marcus Bennett. Mr. Bennett, what are you doing? I'm drinking a Yoo-Hoo, and I just have all of the, the papers and pictures in front of me. TV's on. And I'm just very confused. Am I, um, would there be anything in my house that maybe my parents left behind or maybe something that has Kolak history in it? You would have to search for it. I would like to do that. I like to search around. My parents sometimes, then there's, they have like a, like a little home a little home study, a home office. Okay. I just want to just look in there and see if there's maybe something that's, that they may have that might be of interest to me. As you look around this office, you, for the most part, find nothing that seems too out of the ordinary. But if you'd like to roll your brains for me, difficulty of seven, you may find something to pique your interest. Twelve. <laughs> you find... A locked drawer on your father's desk. Now, it's unusual for the fact that your parents don't even lock the front door of your house at night. The amount of trust they put into the town of Kolok, and you, leaving you here alone day after day after day. But this drawer remains locked. That's so weird. Why would they lock this one drawer? Unless there's something that I shouldn't see that's in it. Uh, you hear a knock on the door. So I try to, like, put everything back like I never touched anything. Because I think it's my parents. Coming! Marcus Bennett goes to the front door, not second-guessing how he would think it's weird that his parents would knock into their own house. <laughs> I've been drinking you hoos I don't know. <laughs> As you look through the window, peering on the other side of the curtain, you see young Mickey Jones looking back at you. So I... Jones! Hey, uh, is it safe here? Weird question. Um... As, as compared to this day? Yeah. It's the safest place you're probably going to be. Yeah. I can't go home? There was a guy there with a gun. Wasn't your dad, was it? No, but he was looking in my dad's room and he pulled out something from the floor. And have you figured anything else out? Well, first off, come in. We shouldn't be talking about this outside. <sighs> Mickey Jones enters the Bennett household. Well? Quite surprised by the size of it. This is where you live? Yes, this is where I live. It's pretty nice. Well, when both of your parents work at Secret Deity, Mine does. Just, we don't live like this. Well, they're not working security, okay? They're yeah, like some of the top point. people in the company there. You hear another knock at the door. Am I having a house party? Is, why is everybody <laughs> knocking at my door? So I'm going to check the door again. This time, just opening the door, standing before you, is young Billy Baker holding a TV under his arms with a jacket over it. Hey, what? guys, uh, can I come in? Are we having a movie night? Well, yeah, I already have a TV, a much bigger one than that. So what okay, is this? Marcus, okay, Marcus, hi, Sky here. I hate you. Nothing has changed. Take Just let us in. Off. What? Why do you have a videotape of Sky? Listen. Let us into your house, Marcus. What it's is that? A, it's not a videotape. She's trapped in the TV. What? It's not plugged in, though. I know. 
It's Sky? weird. Yes, Marcus, you idiot. It's me. You're on TV? Oh my god. She called you an idiot. That's definitely her. I, I push in to go inside. Closing the door behind himself, what the hell Billy is Baker this? takes the TV and places it on the dining room table. This is like a that's the largest portable TV I've seen. Is it running on batteries? Or okay, so I... geeking out for just 2.5 seconds. We're talking about some weird, crazy voodoo stuff. I am stuck in another dimension in this TV that is in your dimension, your universe. But there's no way I'm getting out of here unless we figure it out. I have one day, I think. Or she said one moon's passing something. I don't know. She had like a smoker's voice. It was really hard to hear. She also had really long nails, and I wondered, like, I just wanted to snap one. I was like, ugh, that's really, that's too long, you know? But, oh, they, she knew something about Rachel. There what? was a contract. What? Yes, yes, there was a contract that someone forged my signature for, and Rachel's signature was on it. They said I was her co-signer, and I had to give up whatever I had of hers to them because that they were, they, they were the rightful owners to it. Did but, you? No, of course not. I don't have anything of Rachel's on me. Right? Right. Right. You have her journal though, right? Oh my gosh. Billy! Someone you hear at the door. Quick, cover me up, cover How me up. How many more of us Co are there? Is, this, is that I'm, my, again? I but mute the TV and throw my jacket over it. All right, I am opening the door. Uh, what now? Hey, down here. Oh, oh God. no. What the fuck, man? I thought I, I thought. You, you just... Where have you been? I have little legs. Why are you talking to him like this is normal? <laughs> There's a... I don't know what's normal anymore. Fine. I'll I know let either. In. Oh, please, please. As the small That's squirrel totally walks between your legs and into the house and jumps up on the table. I don't like rodents. You okay. guys have a squirrel sidekick, and it's really not fair. Well, yeah. you got... I don't want you it. You got Sky on the TV like she's freaking Blossom. What do you think about that? Is, is I unmute it. it. I am his. Okay, I am my own TV within my own right. I'm hey. my own electronic yeah, person. That's yeah, a, that's that girl. She's in the TV. <laughs> that's crazy. Brilliant deductive that's deductive. crazy. Is that a dog? You got any, uh... No, it's a squirrel. Get any oh. food around here, man? Okay. Oh. Wait. Hold up! Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go right the pantry. <laughs> no! You stay right here. Wow. You wow. heard me. <laughs> There's a lot of crazy shit going on in my house, and I need to get it taken care of. Who is Marcus talking to? Everybody! Marcus? What? I was just talking to Sky. Marcus can talk to squirrels. Oh, of course he can, because yeah. that's stupid. In front so. of the TV, you see a small squirrel move directly in front of what you, you know, see as a window. This squirrel appears giant to you wow. as it reveals its yellow belly and kind of waves <laughs> with its small paw. Wait. I think this squirrel just waved at me. Yo, this girl crazy. I think that just said, did it just do that? Yo, the, it's a squirrel, right? It's not a dog. It looks like a It's a squirrel. Looks I mean, the whole thing is really sketchy, yeah, but the squirrel me, is here. Kind of looks like a dog. I'm heading to the pantry. It might be a dog, guys. I think the that's a dog. squirrel jumps off the table and walks away. <laughs> okay. I swear I had a dog like that when I was a kid. Anyways. I got a rat like that in my house when I was a kid. Okay, well, that's gross, Mickey. Um... So, as I was saying, <laughs> what, what should we do? Um, get me out of this TV before I die. And let's. Did you, did you yeah. try just breaking the TV? I was I about to, but Sky freaked out. She's not literally in the TV. But this is my only way of communicating with you guys. We severed this tie. I feel like I'll be gone forever. How else? I'm not going to just pop up in everyone's TV. Although, Marcus, is that a big screen? <laughs> Holy Whoa. moly, I didn't know they made TVs that big. Dude, this place is huge. Are you like, you're like Richie Rich. Whoa! Hey. I gotta come over sometime. There's really not any There's more of us. There's another knock. Let's out on the door. Mute TV, throw my jacket over the TV. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So. Should we hide? You're here, you're here, you're on a TV, the squirrel's, squirrel's in the pantry. in the kitchen. So I'm wherever I wanna be. So Can you at least hide in the cupboard? Cause so who's not you want me door? to hide in the cupboard? Yeah, we don't know. squirrel, nobody thinks it. The squirrels are everywhere. It's fine. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna check the As door. As the squirrel moves its way over with a small little box of animal crackers and sits on the recliner <laughs> with in the, the living room. <laughs> I, I go to the door. As you open the door, you see your friend Mallory Jenkins standing there looking uh, down at the ground. What brings you here? Hey, man. Um, he begins to let himself in. What's up? As he walks in and kind of turns... I, uh, 
I'm really sorry. I feel really bad. I, I was just pissed off because you, you didn't call in and I was covering your shift. You trained a squirrel to eat animal crackers by sitting on your chair? <laughs> yeah, I did. Or no, I'm sorry, I didn't. He learned how to do it himself. He's a pretty sketchy squirrel. Uh. Hey, what's up, dude? Did you hear that? What? Did you hear the squirrel talk to you just now? Mm, no. Oh, okay, that's fine. I'm just making you... sure. Because you heard it, right? Uh, oh, I don't but... know that. I, I don't know this guy. Yeah. Oh, this is Mickey Joe, oh. by the way. Oh, you have a girl over, man. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I, oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. Because oh. Billy's here, too. Billy, come on out. Hi. Yeah. Oh, Billy, uh, pull, the, pull the, uh, pull the, uh. All right, the, wait. Pull it up. No, Should... just, just do it. Just do it. Are you sure? Yeah, go for it. Why is this a big, oh. Unmute. Dude, you're vi- you guys are videotaping Sky Hawkins? Um, that is, dude, I came over here to apologize, but you were acting weird as hell. Man, you got... What are you hanging out with these kids for? And why are you videotaping Sky Hawkins? It's not a videotape. Sky? So am I going to have to kill this guy too? Are we just let telling everyone everything? All the dirty little secrets? Hey, you still owe me tacos, you creep. Uh, Marcus, I want those tacos to come from you, not him. Though. Okay, that's a neat of trick. Course. That's a really neat trick. So you still don't believe me after all of this? All these people believe me. We got a talking guy. I want to hold up the cable that's unplugged. It's not even plugged in, and you still don't believe me. Dude, Sammy, believe me. My girlfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't even know that she existed. But Sammy. You've been me. hanging out with Sammy? Yeah, because he believed me, and you don't. You're my best friend. You don't scare. No. Just get the hell no, out. Look, yeah, I'm trying. Out. I'm trying. All right, this is. Do you understand how much this is to take in? Dude, we are in a lot of trouble. Okay? I am in a freaking TV, but yeah, let's make this about you. Let's go ahead and do that. I want to talk through your feelings a little bit more. I'm going to die if I don't get out of here, but no, no. Let's let's talk about this guy just a little bit longer. What we, what we, what we got? All day? She's got a point. Huh? I've been feeling really low lately, man. Oh, more about his feelings. It was great. This is so I, great. I swear to God, Marcus. I feel like you haven't been around much, and you're not telling me things, and... Because I've been practically busy with all of this. That's what I've been trying to tell you. That's why I came to you to try to tell you. I was looking for you for support, and you you left me out, man. You left me out in the cold. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, believe me, or get the hell out. Yes! Yo, fuck this dude. You got better friends now. For once, I'd believe the squirrel. I don't think he heard the the squirrel squirrel say. Okay, well... Marcus, you're sounding weird. What did the squirrel say? He said that. What, what did the squirrel say? He yeah, said that maybe him. he said that maybe we shouldn't be friends anymore. He says he has better friends now. That's what he said. I've been helping you out. I've been taking shifts from you. I've been saying. Sky all Hawkins will now roll oh. her brains. Difficulty of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, if everyone can talk to this squirrel but me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, brains? Yeah. Brains, yeah, D10. Yeah, it's that one. Yeah. (laughs) The weird one. Oh, a four. You have a choice to make, young Sky Hawkins. You have six tokens available. If you succeed this roll, you will be fortunate enough to not have to hear the squirrel. <laughs> if you fail, you can now talk to the squirrel. I want to talk to that squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! It's a curse! Sky, did you hear it too? Did, did your dog just talk? It's a squirrel! Call it's a rat! A dog one more time, motherfucker. He's not very friendly. That's like Samuel L. Jackson in a squirrel. A squirrel, I'm sorry. You just, I'm like, you're really scaled up for me, so you look quite uh, large. Are you talking to the squirrel now, too? Did you just call the squirrel Samuel L. Jackson? I mean, it, did you hear what it said? Potty mouth. I'm gonna go back to eat my crackers. You're all crazy. Save some for me, please. I'm really hungry. Okay, we gotta figure out a way to get her out of there. Uh, yes. I'm, 
I You're still here? Believe everything. This is messed up. You got any ideas? Ideas? Oh, we actually, actually, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I could, I could maybe talk to my parents. No. No. You can't no. tell. Can't do that. Mallory, you can't tell anybody. Cause, but, cause people are dying about yes. this stuff. But my dad's the principal and he's like on the city council and stuff. Oh, so you no. definitely can't definitely tell can't him. I think we're gonna have to kill him. Uh, people are dying every day. It's not a big deal anymore, right? <sighs> Look. I don't trust him. Mallory, we need you to be on our side with this, man. Or else death. So, like, think about it. Also, I'm in a TV and you're wasting my time and my life. I, I won't tell anybody. Good. Okay. You so. all hold him down. I'll slit his throat. <laughs> no. Yes, squirrel. Yes. No, no. I grabbed a knife out of the cupboard. Hey. Did it. Get the big one. Sketchy. He's rich. Calm he probably down. has Sketchy. a katana somewhere yeah. in the in like the book room or something. What they, you got a book room? Like Beauty and the Beast or something? Well, we do no, have. This guy doesn't even question if I'm in the gang. Yeah, cause he is, right? That's talking squirrel has to be in the gang. Well, I was the first one that heard you, okay? So that's gotta be for something. Wait, are we just calling him Squirrel, or does do you have a name? I just been calling him Sketchy, cause that's what he is. Uh, that's rude. But if you like that, then I will call you that. Nah, I'm cool with it. All right, sketchy. He's got okay. a name now. You wanna you wanna help out? You wanna be part of the gang? You wanna roll with us, get home that, boy or home squirrel? Get that knife. You I don't got, have to be like that. I'm just saying, if you wanna be part of the gang, I got I got an initiation for you. All right, what do you got? There's a room right around here, uh -huh. the office. It's got a got a closed drawer. It's locked. Can okay. you and your little squirrel claws open that up? Yeah, no problem. Yes! Sketchy! Sketchy jumps down off the chair and runs into the other room, leaving you all to keep conversing. Guys, Sketchy is all that and a bag of chips. I'm all about him. Wish I could hear him. <laughs> well. I wish I couldn't. I'm not a fan of rodents. Hmm. Um, hey. I am still on the TV. Oh, right. <gasps> yeah. Hey, um, uh, while you're in there, can, can, you, can, you say, can you say, we'll be right back after these messages? <laughs> We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Like, <laughs> this world is shitty crazy, so I had to have something make me laugh. <laughs> no, Maybe she should just stay in the TV. <laughs> okay, Billy. No, that, um, you went too far, Billy. Went too far. Yeah, Billy. I'm going to. Can everyone remind me to punch him once I get out of this thing? Don't worry. Sure thing. We will. How's it going back there, Sketchy? Let a man do his work. <laughs> okay, fine. Is there anything in that room with you? Have uh, we tried moving anything around? Is there a door? <sighs> There's no door. There is a lamp. There's a painting with a weird face on it. Uh, it's like a man that has like a fish. I'm He's like a, it kind of looks like a shrimp. Take a and picture of the picture. Underneath it says, then there appears a singular being. No, number five of the Tenacian de Saint Antone first series. Oh, there's a name. There's a name. Addison Afdon? Aldon? It's probably just like artwork, right? I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like everything's intentional here. Same. I don't know who would intentionally put up that wallpaper. <laughs> That's what I said. I threatened them. So, when I make them upset, they make the room shrink, and I almost die. So I'm trying to be real what? good here. Who's they? Yeah. I don't know. Whoever these people are, they don't... They're they are not even human. They're like some sort of being outside of us. And you owe them something? Are there some contract they have on you with your name on it? I co-signed something that Rachel had signed, and basically they own everything that is Rachel and all of her belongings. But then I, they, it's really confusing. I can't remember everything happened so quickly. She just said like, you have one moon something. One moon. One moon. I don't, I can't remember. What if it's like E.T.? What? So weird. Um. Ouch. Wait, you watched E.T.? I mean, I have, oh, where am I? I hit my head. Ah. <laughs> Where's everything? Hello. All right, we really gotta figure out some, uh, 
something that's going on here. Why is she connected to this TV? Yeah. Of all TVs. Where'd you find this TV? What's wrong with this TV? It was in the comic TV. shop. Uh, Sound real junky. I mean, it's, it's pretty junky. Okay. Oh, hey. I don't have one, so. What's going on? Can you? I, I promise I won't tell anyone. Marcus, you, I. Mallard, it's very simple. We had a, a girl, Rachel Jewell. We thought that she was a friend of ours, but she disappeared in some gold heels. She vanished. And then we found all these pictures that were in her diary, but no one seems to remember who she is. But it turns out that she might have actually been based on this newspaper article, someone who died years ago. And then we knew about her, even though she was supposedly dead years ago. And then all these weird things have happened. And there's something going on in Secret Needy. And there's something going on at Mr. Jewell's office because they know about it. And then we've been trying to figure it out. And Sky fell down a hole. And now she's trapped in this place while Billy, who apparently it's in a coma like something that disappears and then she went into our home but then she was also really right there back at the same time our social study teacher is somehow in on it it's been a lot what of happened crazy to him? stuff oh I don't know he just had he just ran off he ran <laughs> I ran did he leave his car I think he did it's really weird I think he's gonna be in a lot of trouble are we still gonna keep wasting my moments of life on explaining things and to... now we have to figure out how to get her out of here but, so, okay simple. so you found a file and there was a newspaper clipping. Yeah, not to mention the city council article, which is why we don't want your dad involved. We haven't What's, seen this. I, I don't know what that is. Oh, get this, Sky. <laughs> Newsflash. <laughs> uh, Rachel apparently died in a car accident when she was six. In 1980. No, that's that's impossible. I hold the, the newspaper in front of the television. Wait, isn't that when you went into a coma? Wait. Yeah. Eleven years ago. Yeah. There's... Am there's... I? Maybe I'm still in a coma and this is all just a dream. Or maybe you had something to do with this. Maybe it's connected? Connect Rachel can't be dead. You know something about this, Billy? Are you holding out on us? I don't know that much about you, man, so... I don't remember anything from before the coma. But I'm... Just saying, you... you okay, hung out I, know, I know I said that I wouldn't tell anyone, but... Look, my dad's on the council. Maybe I could snoop around and... And figure out what that letter's all about. What does it say? Well, it talks about some kind of... Thing that Mr. Jewel wanted to do. We think it has something to do with bringing Rachel back, but what? it's signed by a, a Rudy Evelyn. Do you know, know who that is? Yeah. We don't yeah. know who. So if what, what's what's the deal with her? Well, that's a council member. Well, has she ever like been to your place? If your dad's part of the council, maybe she stopped by or or was cool about what do you was. mean was. Well, now it's, uh, Randy, Evelyn, their, their son. That was a long time ago. Um, okay. Well, what do you know about Randy, Evelyn? Um, runs True Value Hardware. Seems like a nice person. My dad's friends with him. I don't know if you should be getting too involved. Yeah, we don't want you to get in trouble, man, but... I don't know. We can't get in any more trouble. It might be good having him snoop around instead of one of us. Also, what do we have to lose? Well, I almost died today. Yeah, actually, as I said that, I'm like, hello. <laughs> You're in lives. a TV. We could all die. I am in a TV. We could all die. But this isn't our reality. Right? Have you guys thought more about this? This doesn't seem like our... Our version of what... I think you're right. I think... I don't know what you guys felt, but I felt like when I saw Rachel disappear, there was like this white light, and it was like me getting pulled through something. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that would explain the goo, too. Yeah. Yeah. We passed through to somewhere else. Well, you, all, you all think we're in another dimension? Not, not, you. not we are. Not you. Because we, are. we remember Rachel. No one else does, or they know of her as a person that died years ago. So confusing. Yeah, that's why it's getting kind of annoying explaining it to you over and over again. Maybe take notes, I don't know. 
So now I'm just like gonna start like pressing the remote buttons to just see if any of them let her out. As Marcus Bennett begins Try hitting up, down, up, <laughs> up, up the remote Wait, buttons, ahead, nothing okay, happens. <laughs> nothing. Okay. <laughs> Guys, I found this TV in the comic shop. Of all the places in town, why would it be in the place that I hang out? It feels like someone put it there for me to see. Are you suggesting we go there and check it out? Well, I mean... I didn't see anything else there. I'm just wondering... Everybody said that that place is... It's not haunted. haunted. Yeah, but... How long have you been in there? Sky, weren't you at school yesterday? I don't know. I feel like time passes differently here. (laughs) I don't... I mean, you've been sitting here talking to us, but... Maybe other people have been in that room. What if there's more rooms? And the, because you can see out, right? I you see s- us. Could sort of. I could see out now, but before there was like a comic book blocking my view, but I could hear voices. Hmm. But I, I haven't been in here for like too, too long. I mean, it might be worth to check out if this is where we found the TV, and if that's where Sky popped up. Maybe there's some way of getting her out there at the comic book shop. Maybe. You think there's some way we can get in there? Ask Scott. He, uh, uh yeah, I, that's his name, right? That like Scott guy. I, I could call Scott. But didn't you just send your squirrel to unlock something? Maybe I did. We should, yeah, where has he been? Sketchy. Maybe we should break in. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm almost done. I got, and uh, got it. Okay, okay, all right. Oh, this is uh, oh, this isn't anything we didn't already know. What the. I'm going to run back there and see what he what he found. As you turn the corner, you see the squirrel sitting with a stack of papers as it kind of shuffles through them. Uh, I mean, we got, yeah, okay, a couple people work at Synchronity. They got your, they got the shoveler on speed dial. Uh, let's shoveler. see, we got, um, oh yeah, look at this. Oh yeah, cool, cool. It's, the shoveler. Uh, the shoveler. He shovels your shit. Shoveler! That's it! Sky fell through a hole. The shoveler shovels your shit. What? Can, sketchy! Yeah, shoveler shovels your shit. Can they shovel. Can they unshovel shit? I've never heard. I mean, heard of anybody asking the shoveler to unshovel. But I figure if you can bury something, you can dig it back up, right? What if. We go back to the place where Sky dropped through that hole, and maybe we can make some opening there, shove unshovel, to bring her back out. Should we, should we go find the guy with the shovel? As much as I'm going to be afraid to say so, maybe so. Couldn't we just call him? <laughs> well, apparently, you call the shoveler. You, so how do you phone? find the shoveler? Yeah, it's easy. Let's put out the network of. Y'all you, you realize I'm a squirrel, right? Well, a talking one, though, that apparently has a lot of information. No, what I'm saying is, you know, I can, I, can, I can put the word on the wind. Find out where he is. Yes! Pretty easy to find. He's usually in a couple of local spots he likes to hang out. So Sketchy you mean, is the MVP. I'm just calling it out right now. So you're saying that you have an entire network of individuals that you can reach out to at any time to get information? That's insane. Well, no, we put it on the wind. You, you know, you start talking about it. You, you put a bug in somebody's ear. Squirrels? To the wind? Guys, this makes sense. That's a figure Why? of speech, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm talking to other squirrels. How is this so hard to understand? Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just amazed that you can send I'm this. I'm a fucking squirrel. I get it, Sketchy. All right, Thank Sketchy. You. Well, send it out to the world wide wind that this, it, we need this. <laughs> I'm going to walk outside, I'm going to climb that fucking tree over there, and I'm going to talk to my friend George, and we're going to get this all sorted out. Yes! So he has a name, but you didn't have a name before? You don't need to know my real name. How about we leave it at that? All right. Maybe I got a past. Oh, a maybe dark I don't want to share it with you. Yeah, great. I can't wait to hear the squirrel's backstory. I bet you can't. <laughs> all right. Can I get an update on what you guys were talking about? <laughs> you stay out of this. Just... Okay. Cool. When you learn how to talk to squirrels, I guess you go, you'll understand. Damn it. Sketchy makes his way out the front door, climbs a tree, and begins chirping and making noises next to another squirrel. <laughs> you then watch that squirrel <laughs> run away. Oh, man. Any second now, I guess. 
Hey, uh, Jones. Yeah? I just want to let you know, you you know, if you're feeling unsafe or you don't want to go back or whatever, you know, you're more than welcome to stay here. You're, it's cool. No, no, I have, I have somewhere I can go. All right. Thank you. Sure. Awkward. <laughs> Gonna tell Rachel that, Marcus. I'll I didn't mean it like that. Gonna tell I, Rachel that. I meant. Gonna tell her. I don't keep secrets from her. I'll probably hang here if that's cool. Oh, okay. Yes, please. Cool. Actually, uh, me too. Cause I can't do anything on my own. All right. You can say here too. I'm going to. All right. So here's the deal. Wow, that was quick. Yeah, I totally got a fast that service way. this wind. The squirrels are fast. <laughs> yeah. What we do got you got? short legs, but we move quick, better in groups. What have you got? Graveyard. Graveyard? Oh, that makes sense. Of course. Yes. Of course it's a graveyard. I feel like I'm in a freaking Scooby-Doo cartoon right Is now. Is he there Down now? The what would I tell you? He was somewhere he wouldn't be. That's the whole point in this recon mission, right? All right, whatever. Well, we just want to make sure that this, <laughs> this network of yours has the right information. We're just checking. Are you questioning my network? Okay. Well, every there's question is network. Okay, okay. Everything that he puts out there is real. Got it. All right. Well, I say we head to this graveyard then. All right. It would do you well, Marcus, to listen to your friends. Put more faith in me. Yeah. Put more faith in them. Talking mm. mm. squirrel. That's awesome. I'm there for you. I love that everyone I've is okay with this. Been there for you. You just didn't know until the time was right. Oh, that's cool, Marcus. You know, you really are not helping. I wish I had a guardian squirrel. That's right, guardian squirrel. Yeah. Like your own little person. Ah. Personal little angel. <gasps> mm. Squirrel angel. Angel isn't the word I would use, but I fine. I protect you from all bad things That's in the world. You didn't I protect just, us from the baseball bat I earlier. I I'm a fucking squirrel. Yeah, I just, I just ignore her and just pick up the sky <laughs> television and, say, and just start walking out. <laughs> Are you away from me? <laughs> Are we just going to walk well, to the graveyard with a TV? Careful, Marcus. And a squirrel. Precious cargo here. Should we cover my face or do I gotta do like a solid pose? We should probably cover it. I'll put my jacket over the TV. Thanks. I guess we're getting to go to the graveyard. Whoopee! The sun has gone down. <sighs> it's around 7 p.m. March 5th. Our group begins making their way down to the graveyard. On the other side. Or this side northeast side of Crater Lake. A lot of kids talk about playing in the graveyard, but it's not really a place that you go. The ones who act like they do are most likely lying to appear tougher than they actually are. The shoveler is always there, always watching, doesn't leave that often. Now you know, probably only when needed. As you begin making your way down the hill, you lose sight of the town lights. It's dark and quiet. The entrance to the cemetery directly in front of our passengers. You hear a faint sound in the distance. You know, I know he's called the shoveler, but is he literally just here digging? I guess so. Wanted to try that sound out. <laughs> um, excuse me, Mr. Marcus Bennett calls out in the dark night. Mr. Shoveler? You see a glimpse, a small gleam of light reflect off the blade of the shovel, reflecting the moon as you see it stop, his bald head turn, the whites of his eyes now looking directly at you. Yeah, who is it? Sir, I, I, my name is, my name is... Marcus Bennett, I need your help in digging out something that we've lost. 
I'm known to bury things. Well, this time we need you to unbury something so that we can bury what is related to it. Marcus Bennett will roll his charm difficulty of 10. Seven. Do I have any? Marcus Bennett has six tokens available. I will use three of them. You want me to dig something up? More let something out. Hi. And then I pull the jacket back. I'm Sky Hawkins. I... The shoveler never breaks eye contact with Marcus. He does not seem surprised by the situation that Sky finds herself in. She... She fell down a hole and now is in this room. We just figured maybe you could dig her out somehow, Mr. Shoveler? If I don't get out in one moon's passing, I'm gonna be stuck here forever. Or die. You're my only hope. Everything comes at a cost. What do you need? I I, I got money. He also works at Taco Express. I don't if you take tacos. money. Taco. Do you take? I'm not paid in money. Paid in tacos. What do you get paid in then? Whatever the cost is. Well, what's it going to cost to get our friend out? No way to know. So it's just a giant uh, IOU? Question mark? My services. The payments reflected immediately. Okay. Fine. I'll take the payment. No, no. Uh, I'll take the payment. It, it's me that we're saving, so don't worry about it, Marcus. If anyone... It should fall on. It should be me. But I was summoned. you've gone through so much already. You're nah, all... I'm tough. I beat up, uh... Everything I... comes at a cost to everyone. We all have to hey. have this cost? It's a wish you all share. Wait, guys. Can we talk about this for a second? Yeah. Uh... I... I don't know if this is worth it anymore. If it was going to be able to just be on me, then I'd be okay with it, but... If everyone has to suffer because of the situation I've gotten myself into, I'd rather just stay here and see what happens. I, I don't want to drag you guys into anything else. We, you need to find Rachel. But we lost Rachel. We can't lose you, too. We need you. We, we, we... we can't leave you in there. Yeah. But you also can't get stuck in here with me or worse, something bad happens to you guys because of me. Rachel needs us. And, and she needs you. She needs her best friend. I don't know, guys. Whatever happens, we'll we'll figure it out. We're already in this together. You sure? If it's for Rachel, I'm willing to do it. But not for me. <laughs> well, we technically are doing it for you. We're getting you out of here. Okay, I just, I just gave sure. you a bunch of emotion I, that I've just, never given you before. You know. I'm just, I'm just double checking. Just, just giving you a hard time. And that's why I want you out of there. I need that hard time in my life. <laughs> Aw. You stupid. <laughs> All right, Shoveler. We are willing to pay to get Sky free and have her join us again. Is that doable? The large man walks over to Marcus Bennett. With one hand holding his shovel over his shoulder, he takes the other and he places it on the top of the TV. Puts a little pressure on it as he pushes it down to the ground. As you reluctantly let go, he motions for the rest of you to back away. He bends over, putting the TV up on its side. Young Sky Hawkins sees the stars. Wow. Wow. 
he brings his shovel up to the sky. A bright light envelops you, begins to take over all of you as you feel safe. A warmth that passes over you. You hear the sound of a break, a split, a small crash. The memories that were of Rachel flood your mind. Empty memories. Sky Hawkins sees herself waiting in the morning for a friend that doesn't show. Alone in her car as the wind rattles past her plastic windows. Billy Baker sits at a table doodling on the edges of a worksheet, the chair next to him, empty. Two glasses sit in front of him, one empty, one filled with watered-down soda, merely a fragment of an ice shard remains. Mickey Jones sits on the steps in front of the theater, staring out at the stars. She thinks of the pain she feels, She grabs her arm, looks to her left, and she sits alone. Marcus Bennett lay awake in bed, flicking through pictures of himself staring at a camera to an unknown source. The warmth begins to fade. As does the memories. Who is Rachel Jewell? Our passengers surely do not know. Sky Hawkins stands with the rest of the group. She holds a blue diary in her hand. It belongs to a girl that much is clear, but who? The name escapes her. The name sits on the back of her tongue, just outside of her peripheral vision. It's an itch that can't be scratched. The shoveler stands in a deep hole, a grave. Inside is the television. He steps outside of the hole, his foot placed on something that you can't see, but you recognize that it stands on something that supports his weight, like steps leading him out of the hole. He looks at our group of passengers. It's about perspective. It's always about perspective. As he walks away, the grave remains open for who you do not know. It's getting late. Our passengers know they've been on an adventure together to find something that was lost, but what? The call must have been great to bring you all together, to share the bond that you feel for each other now. And Sky Hawkins for sure remembers that she has roughly 30 days. 30 days? She remembers everything of her time in the hole, but not what brought her there, or who. What? It's good to have you back. It worked. 
You're here again. I um, hug Sky. Oh. And it's like, oh shoot, oh oh. Well. Oh oh okay. Uh, there there it happened. Sorry sorry. I just so ha yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Wait. What was the price? I don't, I don't remember. I feel like there's something I've forgotten. But I... It's right there. I just can't remember. Same. Yeah, I feel like we're forgetting something. Our passengers disperse and head home for the night. Marcus Bennett walks up to his home. The lights are on. Surprisingly, your parents are home early. Hey, Marcus. Mom, Dad. You guys... I figured you guys would be at work right now. Oh, we got off early tonight. Are you okay? You were upset this morning. Oh. Something about a girl. A girl? Who? Yeah. You Your father Sky stands. Or Mickey? Marcus Bennett's father stands, moves over, over to the door towards you, looking back at your mother, frowning, as he puts a hand on your shoulder. Your, your mom was being real mean this morning. Son, you said you had a girlfriend and she was missing and we made she made fun of you and we, we, we want to apologize. That was uncalled for. Well, you know, I was joking. I mean, I haven't had a girlfriend in a long time. Right. <laughs> That's what we thought. Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? You, you, you really freaked us out this morning. I think I'm fine. I don't know. I've, I've been hanging out with kids I normally don't hang out with, but other than that... His hand begins to squeeze on your shoulder. I'm, you feel the grip tightening as he looks directly into your eyes. Dad... Dad, what's wrong? Kind of things that are locked should remain locked, son. For a reason. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. I just... I was... I was trying to find... I couldn't find my pen. And I... Looked in there to try to find another pen. Mm -hmm. And... I'm sorry. It'll never happen again, sir. It'll never happen again. All right. Well, ha have a seat. Let's watch some TV. All right. You know, it's funny. You, uh, I don't know. I just thought maybe we could talk about, like, how your day was at work. Like, you know, you guys never really tell me about your job or anything. Have a seat, Marcus. Let's watch some TV. All right. Don't worry about work. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned up. Mickey Jones down. walks into her apartment to find her father sitting on the couch, his eyes swollen red, a bottle in his hand. He looks up, making direct eye contact with you, unable to hold back the tears. Dad, what happened? It's all, it's all fine now. But you... You did that. I didn't do anything. Dad, I saw you. I didn't do anything. You saw nothing. You saw nothing, and everything... is gonna be okay. Look, Dad, I don't know what it is that you're trying to protect at your job. I'm just trying to give you a life better than this. I had one before. No. Oh. I mean, I work like this for you. What you did today, Dad? That's not for me. I didn't want that. I know. But I had to. I can't let him come for you. Who? 
Dad, there was a guy here. Yeah, I sent him. You sent him? Yeah, I told him to tell you I sent him. What did he take? What was in your room? Things that could have been used against me. Got rid of it. It's all fine now. Dad, I don't know what you got yourself involved in. I wanted to help you, but you... It's none of your business. Maybe I should just go stay somewhere else. Yeah, maybe you should. Yeah, all right. Thanks a lot, Dad. Mickey Jones exits the apartment, unsure of where she'll go, unsure of who'll even take her in. Sky Hawkins sits alone in her room, plagued with the memories and the horrors of what she saw today, and that her life is in fact ticking clock. 30 days. 30 days less left to live? Is that what she meant? Getting me out of the TV, that, that, that didn't do anything. It brought me back, but it... I'm sorry, passenger, that phone's not for you. We'll get to it momentarily. Okay. Fine. Waited long enough, didn't you? Sky Hawkins notices something out in her yard. A man. Moving around between the trees. God. Who is that? This man. Much older. Skinny frame. Has a small bag of Cheetos with him that he's placing around the base of the trees. He looks up at your window. And he continues to place the small Cheetos moving between the trees. It's a waste of Cheetos. March 6th, 4.30 a.m. Billy Baker awakes and begins his daily routine. He preps his skateboard, waiting for the newest issues to be dropped off at his door. As they hit the ground and Billy picks them up, he's startled to see on the front of this town's paper, two suicides bring Kolok to its knees. Two pictures, one of the local bar and another of Jacob Jewell's hanging body from a tree above an empty grave with a TV inside of it. And that is where we will end tonight's episode of Kolok 1991. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. This whole thing is an experiment in live play. Please, if you are enjoying, subscribe. Uh, join our Discord where you can roleplay as members of the town. Many of the people who 
live in this town of Kolok are in fact chat room members who have created characters that come into the story. We pick winners each week if we hit our goal to come onto the show directly from that Discord. Seriously, thank you all so much. Thank you to my passengers here at the table. Woo! These shows survive by your support and word of mouth. If you enjoy it, please tell a friend. Special shout out to Alex Sneed, who does the music for the show. That's Monica Magana. Did he do that song? Bird in the Gilded Cage. Sounded Indeed. Like his voice. It's really good. Nice. Really good. Indeed. Really cool. Uh, thank you, everybody, for sitting at this table playing. Glad to have you back. Glad to be Ooh. back. Oh Strawberry. My gosh. That was so cool. Thank you for sitting inside of a TV tonight. <laughs> I mean, that was, like, so that really was amazing. cool. I want oh. that to be my new profile picture. <laughs> 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 Can we do that again, please? I have some poses I want to do. <laughs> oh, my god. I'm sure we could figure something We out. just yes. got you out. Yeah. I know, yeah. right? I think I want to go back in. That's, <laughs> that's show business. Cool. Watch on the TV. You want to keep going back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why don't you all go around the table to everybody really quick where they can find you and uh, you know what you thought of tonight's show what you're excited about for next week and I will pull up all of the wonderful people who uh, tipped for tonight's show and we will read them off shortly all right yeah you can find me anywhere on the internet as strawberry 17 I do geek lifestyle and gaming or strawberry 17 plays if you want to get your gaming fill but yep that's me uh, you can find me here pretty much every day of my life uh, <laughs> Twitch.tv slash HyperRPG, in case you didn't know. Uh, also, I'm on Twitter, at Lucas Eusebank. Instagram, Lucas Eusebank. Thanks. Uh, I'm on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook Gaming as Shubble. You can find me pretty much under that name anywhere. Uh, you can find me on YouTube and Twitch, Black Nerd Comedy, and at Black Nerd on Twitter and Instagram. And here, uh, Monday nights. Whoop, whoop. All right, we're going to go through these really fast. Thank you all so so much for your support tonight um we have starting off with metis Fadum, hashtag marcus duke devil 95 for billy and marcus utter chaos all the love for shovel good luck mickey <laughs> mr fantasy billy can't die <laughs> <laughs> nurse purple ranger here's a token for sky billy mickey and marcus yes. don't die tonight y'all <laughs> super lot tokens for all sky billy mickey and marcus nice Rita Repulsa, after oh. 10,000 years, you're free. Get yourself out of that whole sky. <laughs> <laughs> Joe the Geek, Billy, welcome to the shop, coma boy. Yes. Are you going to buy anything? <laughs> Game of Joe B, come out of towners. Some out of towners keep stopping by the gas station asking questions. Hashtag rumor four. Ooh, oh. Ooh, I'm excited to see which rumor won. Oh, crap, that one won by a long shot. Oh, that'll be, a f that'll be fun next week. Oh. That's going to be great. Um... Silver Tenth, anyone else seen a couple more suits around town? I don't recognize them. Rumor four. Dan Bowski for Marcus. Jaina, finish the Billy token. E. Lackey, Ooh. Mickey is going to need these. Finishing one token and adding another. <laughs> Erdens, okay, the whole exchange was just amazing. Mickey is awesome. Hashtag Mickey. Sailor Aurora, token for Mickey. Pepper La Poppy for Billy. Sailor Aurora, token for Billy. Logan Pars, Billy burning through those tokens. <laughs> 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 J Pistol, NPC Roger, an eccentric old man who is convinced that he can talk to squirrels of Kolok. Oh. He cannot. Oh. Oh. He can be found leaving <laughs> snacks for the squirrels and having conversations with them all around town. He wishes. Yeah. Jabberwocky, Billy, I'm sorry, but I hope you can never hear the squirrel. Aww. Sailor Aurora, <laughs> token for Mickey. Erdens, here's a token for Sky for excellent TV acting and posing. <laughs> Papper La Papi for Mickey. Danny15 was taken. Mickey, Winston EXE for Billy, and Squirrels in Black for Rumor. Four dudes. Only the squirrels in black are supposed to roam around being sneaky. <laughs> um, thank you all again so so much. Thank uh, you. Thank this you. show, like I said, is a complete and utter experiment in live play. Um, it is not scripted. Uh, these are all amazing improvisers. Uh, I'm so upset that Lucas make, has now making me break two weeks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> myself included. I can't. I can't say funny things without myself laughing. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Um, so you all are just amazing performers, and uh, they're just, like, in the moment so well, and it's so much fun to role play with you all and be in this weird and crazy world, and I can't wait for you all in the chat room to see where the story goes next. Make sure to tune in every Monday night. 
We have some exciting guests coming up the next couple weeks. You can find the replays on YouTube and the Sundays after or in our VODs on Twitch right now. And make sure to tell your friends. These shows survive because you tell other people about them. And the people who have been tuning in... Um, Use hashtag Colock1991 to tell us on social media what you think about the show. Thank you so much for those who have told your friends about it because people have then used the hashtag and said, so-and-so told me about the show. I love it. That's so cool. You all are actually changing the outcome of this show by telling other people about it. So thank you so much. You're all absolutely amazing. We'll be back tomorrow for some Call of Cthulhu goodness for He Left It Dead. It's our uh, Call of Cthulhu horror show here on the channel. And then on Wednesday with our Rat Queens RPG. Thursday, Warhammer, which is Lucas's project Woo! that is nuts. We have a metagame going. If you like tabletop board games, there's a metagame going right now. If you go to warhammer.straylogic.com, you can log in with your Twitch account and play a game that is literally a galactic war uh, that's finalized and decided by the playing that happens on Thursdays on our show. It's amazing. Yep. Wow. You can join the orc team, which you probably should. Join the orcs. Gotcha. There's four teams, but join the orcs. <laughs> all right. Well, I thank go. you all so Thanks. much. We'll be back tomorrow. Bye-bye. You found yourself back at the start. <laughs> <laughs>